got some interesting news in terms of the Eagles quarterback, Carson Wentz. He is unhappy with the Philadelphia Eagles for the recent events that has occurred within the franchise. And he is not interested in being the backup quarterback. And get this, Mario. He wants to he wants to request a trade from Philadelphia if Jalen Hurts continues to be the starting quarterback. Uh, Doug Pearson hasn't said if the QB switch is permanent, which I think it should be. And if it's not, then this dude has some problems. Uh, and he was benched uh, in week 13 versus the Packers. This was written by Adam Schefter. I'm probably, I'm probably going to assume it was um, confirmed by him. Um, well, like you, like we said in the last video, it's not all Carson Wentz's fault. Like, like you said, he's been battling through injury uh, injuries, uh, and it slowed him down. Um, and you know, it, it also doesn't help that you have like the worst off, uh, offensive line in the league. You know, it really doesn't help. Um, so I'll, I'll give it over to you, Mario. What do you think about this? Yeah, look, I understand Carson Wentz not wanting to uh, be a backup. Absolutely. Nobody wants to be a backup in this league. You know, you want to play and Carson Wentz. <clears throat> and I understand his frustration because he's also uh, relatively like still young as a quarterback. So, I mean, I understand it, but on the other hand, man, look, you got to support your team. Like it's just, right. it's just you got to support whoever's behind that center, and it's Jalen Hurts at this point. And unfortunately, you knew it when they drafted him. You had a sense of an idea that that was going to be the next guy if you didn't straighten everything out. And he just couldn't straighten any everything out. He was throwing more picks than TDs. I mean, don't get me wrong; his offensive line was absolutely bad. He was the most pressured quarterback this this in the league, so he had to like. So basically, like you know, he he didn't have a lot to work with. But you know what, Jalen Hurts got the same thing, and he's doing absolutely fine. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, man, like Carson Wentz, hey, look, requesting a trade is the best decision for him. But, like, the way he – I don't think he should have went public with that, you know? Right. I, I, I agree. I closed doors be like, look, GM, listen, uh, general manager, I think it's Harry Roseman, right? Uh, I don't know who the GM is for the Eagles. I think it, I'm pretty sure it's Harry Roseman. He should have said, listen, said, listen, Howie. He said – he should have said, I want – look, I'm, I'm going to finish off this year. I'm going to help Jalen Hurts. But after this year, if – I need to leave this team. That's why. That's what I would have said. After this year, I'm gonna. I want to trade. Simple. But you know what? Like it's honestly, I'd rather be known as a veteran quarterback who helped the backup dude become better. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Two reasons. A, you're a better person because you're helping somebody else in need because you were once that rookie, and you're helping somebody else. And B, don't you want to be known as the best quarterback ever? That's everybody. That's every quarterback. Every quarterback wants to be the best. I do not care. They want their team to be the best. I want to be the best by beating the best. You know what I'm saying? When Aaron Rod, when when Brett Favre beat Aaron Rodgers, right? He beat Aaron Rodgers. He beat the guy he he trained. You know what I'm saying? When Drew Bledsoe beat Tom Brady, like 31 or 40, whatever the score was, I can't remember. When he left uh, New England for the Buffalo Bills, he beat Tom Brady, who was being trained by him. So I want to beat the best, and that's the way you're going to beat the best, not ruining someone else's career or being or being uh, kind of uh, complaining about anything. Help Jalen Hurts out, train him to be a better quarterback. Because guess what? If you ever cross with, if you ever cross paths with the Eagles again with a different team and you beat Jalen Hurts, it's just going to feel that much better. So I mean, so honestly, man, I would have did it behind closed doors, no reports, nothing like that. And I would have just, and I would have, and I would have told him, look, after this season, I want to be traded if I can't start. I feel like I still have some years left in me. And if you're going to make the decision to start Jalen Hurts, then by next year, then I'm going to leave. I would, I'm waiting a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Uh, sorry if I have my cat here. She, uh, she was screaming. She needed some attention. Um, but yeah, I absolutely agree. I really don't think he, um, I, I really don't think he should have went public with this. And I mean. You know, this is going to create some really bad relationships with the team. This is going to create some really bad. I, I feel like this is going to create some bad blood between these guys, because like nobody, nobody likes to hear that. You know what I mean? Like every like when you when you play for a team, you got like like you said, you got to support one another. Even if you don't agree with the decisions made, and you don't like what's going on, you still got to like you know support your team no matter what. You got to support your players. It's, it's as simple as that. Unless if they yeah. did something really messed up. That, you know, and you know, obviously, you don't listen to that. That's not yeah, what happened. Right. I mean, like, and I mean, like, the perfect example. Um, sorry for cut you off, but the perfect example of doing that is, um, Tony Romo, 
when Tony Romo, when Dak Prescott came in and Tony Romo got hurt, Romo knew it was done. They knew, he knew that Dak was going to start. And he realized, like, look, it's done for me. I got to retire. And he said, and he said, the best thing for the Dallas Cowboys right now is Dak Prescott. And I completely respect that. And credit to Tony Romo for saying that. But, like, look, I understand why Carson Wentz is frustrated because in him, his opinion, he's still young. He still has a little bit of football years left in him. He doesn't want to waste them being a, uh, sitting on the bench. I completely understand all that. But I would have did that. I would have did that. Um, I would have did that in private. Right. Right. And and I would have done it in private, too, because, like, you know, again, like, if my team hears, you know, me saying something like that in public, you know, uh, especially publicly, especially to a source like ESPN of all sorts, everybody looks at ESPN. Like, I mean, come on. I mean, you know, you can't, you got you to gotta, you gotta support your dude out there. Like you said, you know, we get that Carson Wentz has, has the worst O-line in the league and, and, and he doesn't have a lot to work with, but so does, so does Jalen Hurts. In other words, Jalen Hurts is working with exactly as much as Carson Wentz is and he's doing just fine. You know, so I mean, if you want to get traded, fine. I understand, but like, like you said, I feel like he should at least teach Jalen Hurts a thing or two, you know? You know, at least be a helpful teammate. At least, at least act like a teammate. You know what I mean? And then, right. and then if and then if it's all said and done, you want to get traded, fine. But like, you know, I feel like this is just gonna create a lot of bad blood. And I really, I really think, I, I, I really think he shouldn't have said it to the public. I really think this, like you said, should have been behind closed doors. Right, but well, with that being said, you know, good luck to Carson Wentz. Uh, hopefully, he gets what he wants. Good luck to Jalen Hurts. Uh, good luck to the Philadelphia Eagles.